Hey there, got a uh, non-farm day. Well, I, mostly non-farm day. I'm gonna go down there and check on the irrigation and stuff um, just with those new beds and new irrigation. I just wanna make sure everything's cool. The main thing I have to get done today is uh, get ready for the baby chicks that are coming tomorrow. And so that's something I'll work on this afternoon. If I have some time, maybe I'll do some, start some seed trays. I don't know, I'm pretty busy today. Uh, I did go grocery shopping this morning, which was interesting. I was curious to see uh, how busy it was. And I've mentioned this before, but I'm really trying to go like every two weeks and just try to limit my exposure uh, and you know try to go out as little as possible, which I'm hoping all of you guys are kind of doing the same thing. But it, it was very quiet there. But the one thing that surprised me, there was like no produce. I don't know if you guys are experiencing that in your supermarkets. I went to BJ's today, but yeah, there was just like no produce there. Very, very little. Um, I mean, they were out of some stuff you know, over throughout the store. But generally that was like the one thing I noticed it was like super low on. So hopefully you guys are growing food or planning on it, or, you know, you have a farmer or a neighbor that can give you guys some food. And I know it's early. I mean, we're all used to be able to get food whenever we want during the course of the year, but it is April. And so for a lot of places, they don't really have a lot of local food yet. So just keep that in mind if you guys are looking for food out there. But uh, yeah, that's what's in store for today. And I want to talk about one other thing while I'm out here, uh, the chickens um, right now, you guys know that I've been having these guys, I only have 15 hens plus Larry, and they're clearing this old field block. And I'm kind of wondering if it's too big of an area for 15 chickens, because they've been out here for a while now, and I don't see like getting any more uh, eaten and broken down and stuff. So I don't know. I'll keep an eye on them for another week or so, but I might have to put them in a smaller area just to make it more concentrated and then move them just to make sure they're getting it down to the ground. Because I really want them to eat everything that's there and mix up all the wood chips and compost and everything and just make it one level thing. So yeah, um, this is, I'm not really sure. I don't, I wasn't keeping track of time, but maybe a couple weeks. Anyways, I'm gonna head down to the farm, go check on the irrigation and those new beds. Well, down at the farm, I know I mentioned it's a non-farm day and that is true. I'm not gonna be here for, for very long, but yesterday we got that stuff out in the field and we set up the irrigation and the timer and I just have no idea about, you know, how long to run it for yet and what the coverage is like because it was just so windy yesterday. So I'm just down here. I'm gonna go check out the beds and then probably adjust the water a little bit. Let's check that out. Well, here are the four beds that we planted out yesterday. Onions, lettuce, and two beds of carrots. And the onions and lettuce, they, they're doing okay. I think the, let, the onions are looking better than the lettuce. Um, you know, the lettuces were hardened off, but you know, it is middle of the day right now and the sun's beating down on them. So. Uh, another thing I have to get used to here is there's really no shade at any point during the day. You know, my house, I have a lot of trees and so I do get some shade at some points in the early morning and afternoon, depending on where you are on the, on the property, but here full sun all day long. So it's definitely had to start getting used to that. Um, I see like, there's definitely a little bit of moisture right under the surface, but the surface is totally dry. Uh, and not as important with the lettuce, but definitely with the carrots, we got to keep these super moist until they germinate. And that's one of the hardest things about carrot germination. So. Uh, later on in the year, we're probably going to do some um, covering just to try to keep the soil moisture up. Uh, one good trick is to use the silage sharps and cut them in strips so that it fits on a bed and put the white side up so it doesn't cook it. And then you can water it in really heavy and put the silage sharp on it. We're going to try that later in the year. I haven't done it yet personally, but definitely know some people that have and had good results with that. So, um, you know, anytime you set up your irrigation or really anytime during the year when you're really checking out your irrigation system, you want to make a lot of observations and you know, the weather changes a lot. It's warm, it's windy, it's rainy, all that kind of stuff. But for, you know, during different seasons, you'll kind of get a sense of like how many minutes a day at what times and stuff works well for you and your context. So I I'd literally just set, we literally just set this up yesterday. So going to take some tweaking. Um, I'm probably gonna run it a couple times a day and try to increase the amount of time per cycle. But I'm gonna throw some water, water on it now too while I'm here and observe it and see how the coverage is. So if you guys watched the video I made yesterday, I started with the lowest nozzle or the nozzle that throws the least amount of water, the gold or the number six. And if you're not familiar with wobblers, there's little nozzles in the center there and you can increase uh, the size of the nozzle. And what that'll do is it'll throw more water. So it'll throw it further and more gallons per minute. And there's ratings for all that stuff based on what pressure you're running at. So I always start with the smallest one and then work my way up and make sure that I'm getting the coverage. And one thing I'm concerned about always is, you know, even coverage, but also the corners, because they seem to be the, the areas that don't get as much coverage. And so I'm standing right here at the corner and I'm definitely getting hit and I'm past the furthest point. I also hear it hitting the tarp over here quite a bit and I can see the sort of spray pattern. So I just want to make sure that the ends of the beds and the corner of the field block, that those get covered. 
So I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes and keep an eye on it. Well, I don't think it was quite throwing far enough and it was kind of my suspicion that I would need to put in a bigger nozzle. So these nozzles are located right in the center of the wobbler. And here are two, the gold and the green, or I think it's called lime actually. It's the number six and the number seven. And you probably can't see it, but the lime is slightly larger than the gold. So what I have in here right now is the gold. And what I'm using is a 5 8 inch wrench. And if I put that on there, and you can strip these out if you're not careful because it's all plastic. So you just loosen this guy up. And the little bit inside will come out. So you can see the nozzle in the center there. So you just pop that out. Just use the wrench here, but whatever. Pop the green one in, sorry, the lime. Put this guy back in and screw it in by hand and then tighten it up. And that's how easy these wobblers are to adjust. And, you know, besides the pressure, the distance and all that stuff, but you, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of variables here you can tweak till you get what you're looking for but it's pretty easy to swap out the nozzles. So I'm gonna do that on the other one and then we'll test it out. Well, I think I'm gonna go with this for right now. And I had a feeling that it wasn't gonna be covering enough just from kind of watching it yesterday, even though it was so windy, it was hard to tell just by the, the spaces of the fuel blocks and everything. But you know, I've set these up before and we'll get it dialed in. And like anything in farming, there's no formula. There's no like, here's exactly how you do it. You guys know it's all contextual. You know, when every step in your gauge just some, some, even the same part somewhere else, we're gonna have different pressure, flow rate, size, soil, wind, orientation, all that stuff. And so you have to take all that into consideration and just make observations and then make adjustments based on that. And, you know, as long as you're paying attention and you're not just like, oh, it should work and then it doesn't, you'll get, you'll get a good result. So I'm pretty happy with this right now. I gotta get, I gotta head home and take care of some other stuff, but I just wanted to make sure I got down here today just to keep an eye on it because of those new crops on the ground. So see you at home. Well, back at home, used up most of my day already. I spent the last hour and a half or so consulting with uh, a couple uh, in Texas looking to start a market garden and super nice people. And it's just always really nice to chat with people and try to give them as much advice and help as I can, help people get started on the right foot. And it's just very cool. Um, anyways, home and I just set up the, the brooder for the chicks coming tomorrow. And I'll get into all the details about how I set up the brooder and stuff tomorrow and get the chicks, get them set up and all that kind of stuff. And that'll be cool if some of you guys are interested in looking to get chicks or just want to see how I do it. But let me show you what we got going on so far. All right, well, this is my garden shed, which I have divided into partly a brooder. I've talked about this in other videos, but let me just show you where we're at right now. So I'll go into more detail tomorrow about all this, but we got water, feed, grit, and a heat lamp, wood chips. So we should be all set here. Well, that's about all I have for you guys today. Tomorrow should be really exciting with the baby chicks. It's been a while since we've had baby chicks here and I'm really looking forward to it. And also looking forward to getting that mixed flock back in here and get some cool chickens and stuff like that. And if you guys are looking to get in touch with me, the best way right now is to send me a DM on Instagram. Uh, I have taken down the Satin Hill Farm website because I am, I don't have a farm anymore. At some point soon, I'd like to set up my own website, which I will get around to hopefully, and so people can contact me through there. But as of now, just hit me up on Instagram and I'm doing my best to get back to people. Um, but again, it's been really hard. I've been super busy between all the different things I'm juggling. But thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure you hit subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow.